Good morning on this rainy southern Ontario day. Drizzle and cold and whatever. At any rate, um, Don the old radio guy here. And I'm about to do a couple of very short videos. Um, I had uh, the, the good fortune to be given a number of old radios uh, from a gentleman in uh, a city uh, an hour's drive away and uh, I've just basically had a look at some. Uh, some are for parts only. Um, then I came across this little fella and it is so cute I cannot believe it and also unbelievable is that it is a five tube ACDC Super Het, what they call an all American five radio. Okay, now the uh, power cord was cut off, so I did go ahead, uh, take the back off, and notice there's a heat shield because there are all the All the tubes jammed in there. How can I show them? Uh, rectifier 35W4, uh, power output tube 50C5, 12AV6, which is a detector AVC and first audio, uh, 12BA6, which is the IF, and 12BE6, which is the converter. All right, so we will go through this. Um, it's hellishly dirty and I'm going to have to clean it up to some degree but it is so cute that if I can salvage it and uh, make it usable I will. So I've undone the the bolts there's a piece missing there which I will endeavor to make a replacement piece out of epoxy to go in there. Not quite sure how I'll do it but uh, I want this to work if at all possible. We don't get very good AM reception up here where I am, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we get one station, <laughs> one whole station. At any rate, okay, I take off the knobs. And since I've already removed the uh, bolts from the back, we can slide this fellow out. And I put the uh, turquoise very cute uh, plastic case aside and as you might be able to see it's dirty um, I don't know what it's like glued on there I'm gonna have to do some serious scrubbing so uh, the cord was cut off and so what I've done is solder in temporarily a replacement cord as you can see there's one two three four five capacitors including what I believe is what they call the death capacitor which is this connection from live to the chassis and of course if that capacitor fails and shorts uh, anybody touching the chassis could get a nasty nasty if not lethal shock so let's uh, let's give this a go I'll put the knobs back on and see if we can get anything out of it or whether it's a goner. All right, I shall, as uh, Paul Carlson says, use my uh, uh, isolated uh, current limiting transformer setup here. Um, I've got it on dim bulb and I've got it on isolation and I'll turn the voltage down a bit Okay, uh, the dim bulb is showing nothing. Of course, I have to turn it on. We've got it at 60 volts, 62 volts, and uh, nothing nasty seems to be happening. Do we have any life in the tubes? I don't know. Let's take a chance and crank this voltage up to 90 volts. I think I can see some glowing there. Oh yeah, definitely. The rectifier is showing. Oh, 
we have life. Oh, the volume control's in bad shape. Oh my goodness, we're going to the station. I can't believe that. Alright. Let's go all the way up. Now that volume control needs cleaning, but good. But it's picking up a station. And there seems to be a bit of a hum. But you know, there it's quiet again. That's unbelievable. This radio is about, I don't know, 64, 65. It's sort of the end of the uh, vacuum tube All American 5, I would believe. You don't get much signal up here, so I'll try my little antenna. Now I have it on isolation. Experience the best of senior living, presented by the Owen Sound and District Chamber of Commerce. The Seniors Trade Show, sponsored by Woodley Care. That's how easy. Details at oschamber.com. Showers today, possibly a thunderstorm late this oh, afternoon. Yeah, Windy as well, a high of nine. It works. Tonight, rain ending after midnight, then cloudy. Can you believe that? I've done it. nothing to it other than and replace the. Uh, Let's turn it off and get my trusty contact cleaner. See if we can't make that a little less problematical. If you can see in there, there's the volume control. And usually on radios and stereos, audio equipment of this size, there, uh, this time period, there is a gap. It's quite handy. To uh, shoot in some contact cleaner. All right, I've still got it on dim bulb, but the voltage is right up. So let's see what we get. You notice that on the uh, rectifier and output tube, there are little clips that hold things in place. Volume control. High fidelity it's not, but this is amazing. Now, this uh, loop here is hooked up to my long wire antenna outside, and it still is problematic getting uh, any more than one station here. But let's see. There is a weak station there. Look at that. I don't know where that is. It's a little on the weak side. Now I have uh, an impedance match and maybe I can swing the camera around and show this. Where are you? There it is. Right in the middle. I think the light is sort of interfering with the visibility. At any rate, um, I have the coil and switching. Uh, the coil is tapped, and as you can tell, even on broadcast, it makes a difference to what we receive.
might do better in the evening. It's way easy to do that anyway without really making things worse or not. All right. A small technical glitch happened here, and after a few choice words, uh, which will not be on the video, I have uh, gone and made myself a coffee, a coffee with extra stuff in it. Nice. So we will continue. Um, I have found in the video that was lost a rather disturbing situation with this radio and uh, it is I'm hooking my where are we? ground lead for my meter and I'll try and get that in the frame as well where are we? there, well that's handy <laughs> block the block the radio too. Let me see if I can reposition this. Okay, uh, what I thought was an isolated chassis and this was the death capacitor. It is not. It is in fact just an across the line filter capacitor of such uh, designed I guess to uh, prevent any noise that's on the uh, power line coming through and causing disturbances on the radio. In some situations the reverse is true in that it's designed uh, across the line to help prevent noise that's generated from your device from going out on the line. At either rate um, that is not a death capacitor because it is something worse. I have the uh, plug here and uh, Okay, if you can see the meter, we now have a short or a connection as such front directly from one side of the AC plug, which is not polarized. This is one I put on. Uh, if I can find a polarized plug, I can put that on. That's not a problem, just cut this fellow off or replace the cord entirely. So what that means is that this chassis is now directly connected to the AC line. And depending on which way you plug it in, you will either get this hooked up to the neutral or hooked up to the live. And if you were unfortunate enough to touch the chassis, and also touch some other form of ground, you will get a nasty and possibly lethal shock. These things are very, very dangerous. Uh, under this situation, I would never ever consider selling this radio. Uh, I will simply use it uh, for my own purposes and make absolutely certain that I do not touch anything uh, that uh, might expose me to an electrical shock. The other situation that is just as scary is that if you can see the meter, this is chassis, these are the shafts that protrude and you can see they're also directly connected to the chassis which I might possibly be better off to demonstrate by putting this across or hooked up to the AC plug. Okay. Now that also shows that this shaft that protrudes from the radio and this shaft which also pr protrudes from the radio. Let me get a good connection here. What do we got there? Have I got it on the right side? Oh! Well, heck, that's directly connected. Maybe I just don't have a good... Well, how can that be?
there it is there okay my uh, rusted and corroded and dirty shaft there does not did not give me a good connection but it is it's directly connected to it so that means that if anybody pulled the knob off which are easily accomplished they're just friction fit knobs where are we sticking out from the volume opening and the tuning opening that's also a shock hazard very very scary okay uh, enough of that now that everybody's full warned um, I wanted to show some of the things they've accomplished in order to um, squeeze five tubes and associated circuitry in here you have I'm not sure if I went over it in the other part of the video, but you've got 35W4 rectifier, 50C5, which is your um, audio output tube, 12AV6, which is the first audio and uh, AM detector, and possibly AVC. Um, your 12BA, that's 12AV6, sorry. That's uh, 12BA6, and that is your IF tube and the 12BE6 which is your converter tube. Now if you do the math you can see that uh, they can eliminate a power transformer for these sets by simply hooking up all the tubes in series and generally the rectifier which is associated with taking the line voltage and rectifying it, converting it from AC to DC uh, so the, the filament is uh, at the highest end of that chain. But if you add them all up, you will get 35 and 50 is 85, and 12 is uh, 97, <laughs> and 12 is 109, and 12 is 121, and that works out perfectly. So these things don't need a dropping resistor when they're hooked up like that, and that's the reason why they were designed that. Okay. Um, with a normal uh, AA5, you have your converter tube, which in this case is a 12BE6, and in that uh, there is an oscillator section uh, as a sort of a triode part of it, and then you have the pentode section, it's actually a pentagrid uh, tube, uh, is the uh, mixing facility. So when you get the oscillator in that that uh, path of the electron flow um, uh, with the uh, mixer part uh, that becomes a converter and you will get four distinct uh, waveform signals coming out from this. You will get the tuned signal from your antenna and you will get the oscillator signal which is also determined by the position of this uh, second part of the tuning capacitor, you will get the added frequencies when you add the main frequency or the received frequency and the uh, oscillator frequency, you will get the plus of that and then you will get the subtraction of that, the minus. And that is usually the one we're after. We're after the difference signal between the uh, oscillator and the uh, input signal and in this case in most uh, AA5s it's 455 kilohertz or kilocycles and then that is tuned inductively in this case um, through a primary and a secondary and then passed to the IF so basically through that you will have the 455 kilohertz IF frequency and all other frequencies will be suppressed. They may be there to some degree, but they're greatly suppressed. The tube amplifies that and then it passes normally to another one of these IF transformers which has a primary tuned section and a secondary tuned section. In this case, if you look at the chassis, you will find, where are we? Put it in the right frame. There we go. There's not much room between the audio output transformer, the speaker, the tuner gang, the uh, filter capacitor, and the first IF. There's no room. 
if they increased the size of it, they might have squeezed it in. But what they chose to do was put this fella in. Where are we here? Okay, uh, that is part of this, essentially. Uh, it is a tuned primary transformer, or coil in this case. It's not really transforming anything. And if I can show the schematic and point out what I've just discussed, there is the converter, there is the tuning capacitor, this tunes the incoming signal to maximize to the frequency that we want to receive, and this is the <coughs> pardon me, um, oscillator section which tunes in tandem with this to give us an output that's basically defined as 455 kilohertz and there's the primary and that is tuned inductively and there's the secondary and that is tuned inductively get this in the frame properly now when it comes to the amplification of this the 12b a6 the output of that in order to save space they've just have a, a primary coil essentially and that is tuned single tuned not double tuned and then capacitively coupled to the detector plate of the uh, 12AV6 and that's how they save that. Now um, it's not as selective when you do that and I guess there's some sensitivity issues too but uh, in the case most of these things were meant for urban situations and at least it has the IF stage which a lot of the cheaper ones at the end of that they went to four tube with the converter going straight to the detector and the sensitivity on it was like almost zero. It was hopeful. Hopeless, I mean. Okay, um, I've covered everything again that uh, I lost in the last video and we're still recording so I've still got it. Hooray for that. Okay, so I think what I'll do is uh, finish my coffee, that's the most important thing, and then I will off camera change this, 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 and this capacitors, check the resistors, and uh, think about changing the filter capacitor. Uh, it seems to be working quite well. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do. At any rate, I won't bore you with that. It's a lot of cutting and soldering and fitting in, and it's hard to get the camera to focus on what I'm doing. So this time I have this in the can and I can come back in a bit. So we'll see you, way, see you in a while. Okay, I've had to switch over to my trusty cell phone. Where are we? Put this down here where I can focus on it. All right, I have a capacitor that will be used for replacement and it is hooked up with the scope probes as you can see the ground lead on one side and that now what i'm going to do is i'll switch up to the scope and then i will hold the body only of the uh, capacitor and then i will note let's just do it now okay i'm holding that and as you can see the scope is showing approximately one section okay that's the gain i'm getting through okay now i will have to put the phone down hold on whoa now i've switched the leads around and now we'll take you back up and you can tell that the gain is a bit higher. This method is not uh, infallible at all, but what it's indicated to me is where the probe is hooked up, that is the outside foil. And I will put a dot on there with a magic marker, and I'll do that with all my capacitors and then I will be able to replace the capacitors in the appropriate manner. And that is more important than you might realize. 
Uh, in audio circuits, it will restrict or reduce the amount of hum that you get because essentially the grounded part of the outside foil acts like a shield for the rest of the capacitor. And so therefore you're exposing uh, that signal to much less of the environment where hum might be a problem. For RF and IF and other higher frequencies, it also acts as a shield to stop uh, oscillations and other instabilities that will happen. So uh, if you're going to do this, I would suggest you find a way to uh, uh, check these and uh, determine which is the outside foil. And, uh, and that's that. Okay, now I've got to uh, upload this too. <laughs>